Yo, what's happening everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are all having a great day today. I really appreciate you guys tuning into the new video and uh, I really just appreciate all the subscribers and the new subscribers. You guys mean a lot to me and I know I haven't been really making a lot of content but we're still putting out videos. Uh, I'm trying to do at least, you know, one or two videos a week uh, when I have time. So what we're gonna actually do today is change the rear diff fluid in the car. Now, a lot of you guys know I run AMS oil. I actually just changed my oil like three days ago. And so uh, we're gonna go get the, the rear diff fluid changed. Uh, we're gonna head over to AMS oil, get that stuff. Uh, and then we're gonna head over to Robbie's and use his lift. He was nice enough to let me use his lift. So I really appreciate that, Robbie. You know, it's kind of nice to just use a lift so you can get the car level instead of jacking it up. Uh, the, the lift is just so nice. So anyways, guys, let's head over to the AMS oil dealership. Let's get this stuff and then let's get this stuff changed. Let's get it. What's going on, Rich? What's up? I'm actually just uh, filming a video right now. So uh, I came to get some, uh, I know you had the stuff, so this is the place to get it, guys. Come out here, get some AMS oil. This guy's awesome over here. And uh, this is pretty much where I get all my stuff. So uh, I'm just gonna be doing uh, rear diff fluid today. And so uh, we're gonna get that changed. And uh, it's, been, uh, it's been quite a while. So I uh, thought I'd come out here buggy again. <laughs> These BMW owners, man. <laughs> no, this is a really nice car. This has got the turbo, right? Nice. I keep telling him he's got to get a tune on this thing, but uh, doesn't listen to me. So it's really nice. Is this a uh, what year is this one? Nineteen. Nineteen. Hey, pretty new. Oh, there you go. You can just do that from your uh, key? Yeah. Wow. That's pretty sweet. We even got the, we got the VP hat. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. There we go. Now I think, hey, thanks a lot, Rich. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yep, no problem. You guys come over here and see Rich if you guys are in my area. He's got a, uh, he's got everything, and he'll hook you up. Catch you later. Got that. Still got that in here too. Alright guys, so we just got over to Robbie's place over here and uh, he was nice enough to let me use his lift and get this stuff done and now he's going to go in and t uh, tell us what we're going to be doing. So what we're doing today is, is we're going to take out the fluid that the factory put in the differential and we're going to replace it with some high budget Amsoil Severe Gear Lube. Uh, one of the things that a lot of people don't realize about uh, synthetic is, is they'll usually see that yeah it runs higher mileage and so on. The real reason you want to run this is because it does not have the heat retaining properties of regular oil. So your rear end will run cooler with synthetic. The next thing is, is that regular oil used to have what we called zinc in it, or ZDDP. And that was like ball bearings in your oil to keep the metal from touching metal to metal. And that's also shear strength. Well, synthetic has a much higher shear strength. So whenever you're talking about something like a rear end, today especially, you want to use this stuff. Uh, the one thing in confusion though, is that this is not, this is not a muscle car rear end. This dis differential posi is just like, say, a front wheel drive car. It's called helical. Now old muscle cars had clutches in them like an automatic transmission and that was actually a friction surface between paper and steel. And when you go around a corner, the rear end would chatter if you put just regular fluid in. So they would give you a limited slip additive that stops the chatter. Well, this is called a friction modifier for the oil. It modifies your oil so that you don't have rear end chatter. 
a regular rear end, which they would call an open rear end with a muscle car, had just spider gears. There was no pause track to it. It was all gears. This is called a helical posi or a helical limited slip. What that means is, is it uses helical shaped gears with no friction surfaces whatsoever to create posi. So it in no way, shape or form ever needs a modifier to deal with a paper uh, clutch disc, if you will, which most of these have. Uh, some of the old Mopars, they used what was called a cone posi, but it still used the same material, so kind of irrelevant. Uh, old posi had like a clutch disc, new posi, helical gears, doesn't use that crap. So we're not using this. Use my back. Um, first thing that we're going to do here, too, is look at what we've got. Well, this is an 8 millimeter socket. You'll notice an upper hole and a lower hole. These are pretty simple. Uh, you take both of them out to drain it, and then this is obviously the drain hole. But uh, the way that you fill them up is, is they don't put dipstick tubes in rear ends and so on. So you just fill in the uh, fill up the uh, upper hole here until it pours out. As soon as it pours out, you're full. Brainlessly easy. So that's what we're doing today. Also, tell them about this really quick, not to go off topic. Oh. But you built this, right? Yeah, I built this from scratch. So this is what we call, and I still got a couple other little things that I'm doing to it. Uh, this is called a 340-360 hybrid. So all, all 360s have a cast crank and they have a larger main. All 340s have a steel crank and a little bit smaller main. So this is a roller hydraulic block that's a 360, which has nearly the same bore. And it has a custom CNC spacer to add the steel crank from a 340 to it. Wow. And then it has 340 blower pistons and rods in it. Wow. How much power should this be making once it's... I have enough fuel and everything and blower and all that for 1,200 horsepower at the crank. I'm not going to do that because, as you can tell from all the prettiness, this is for my cruiser. <laughs> I plan on drag racing this car. Uh, <laughs> so... It, if it does more than 600 wheel on turning it the fuck down, I'm going to get different pulleys. Um, in any event, I got uh, LA uh, aluminum heads for it. They're an RPM type head. It has uh, adjustable roller rockers. Wow. Uh, I ported and polished the ports. I've been porting heads forever, so it's hard for me to do my own engine and not actually port the heads. Right. I ported Scott's heads, and, in fact. Alright, this, awesome. This has a custom upper carburetor plate, and you'll see it's got a hole in the back right here. Now this is a one-off part you cannot buy. This is my design. This wow. is all CNC cut from billet. This whole piece here is all a bypass, and it's all CNC cut from billet. So when you buy a Hellcat or anything with a blower, Corvette, or even a Mini Cooper, it has a bypass. What that means is, is that when you're cruising or idling, the bypass is open like so, and that allows the air to circulate in the blower, keeps the blower nice and cool. Then as soon as you floorboard it, flap goes shut, you have instantaneous boost, and away you go. Nobody ever did that with these blowers. Hmm. Ever. So I've got the Pro Charger unit, and I had this CNC cut made, and I'm going to stick my Pro Charger valve on there, and that's going to make that work. That's awesome. And then nobody makes a blower drive. So what I did was, is I got the $3,000 March system, and then this whole blower drive here has been CNC cut from scratch uh, to put the belt just a quarter of an inch in front of the pulley. Wow. Awesome. And then it has self-tuning, self-learning, fuel injection. Uh, it's my cruiser. And there's a lot more details to it, but that's like a whole novel, so we won't get into that. <laughs> I'm kind of scared to see how bad this looks. <coughs> uh, it's not bad. These so hell really hardly. It says like thirty to 50,000 miles, it should be changed, but also that's 
What do you think about that? I think people go a lifetime mm -hmm. driving a car and never change this. That's what I think. Probably. <laughs> well, just like the manufacturers say that you don't need to ever change your uh, transmission fluid. I don't like that. Everybody I, bitches I, and I, complains I, about automatics, old Dodge <laughs> automatics going and having problems. And yet you're supposed to power flush your uh, overdrive automatics with Chrysler every few years. Nobody ever does that. That actually doesn't look bad. <laughs> no, that looks really nice. Huh. One of the biggest reasons why that really looks nice is the same reason that you don't need that uh, modifier. There's no oh. clutches. It isn't filling your rear end up with carbon and paper and burnt metal to metal <laughs> crap. It's just not in there. Wow. It's just all gears. Yep. You need us. <laughs> at least they made at least they made this little do hat on here so you can actually fill it instead of having a one of those yeah, oil. But they've made oil. that. They've made that. One of the really good things you want to do when you ever you have a uh, oil drain plug that you want to change is always buy one with a magnet in it. Hmm. Good point. Because all it takes is, is if something starts to go in the rear end, you'll get a piece of metal that comes loose, right? Mm -hmm. That piece of metal continues to roll around in there, and it destroys other things as it moves through there. Often you get a little chunk of metal that falls off, and it gets stuck on the magnet, guess what? Right. No more damage. I was also thinking about getting them, getting those uh, magnets on the oil, the oil filter, too. That Scott was showing me. Yeah. You can get those clamps that go into your oil filter. It's like a hundred bucks though for a set. Yeah, I've been showing him that too. Uh some of us some of us uh tightwad people go down to Walmart, yeah. buy the big package of big magnets for two ninety nine and zip tie them on there, and guess what? You know, the metal <laughs> out of your engine. The other thing you guys will notice is, is that this, this rear end will actually get hot. When you feel it, it was just kind of cruising around and it still feels hot. You know, and uh, one of the things that I've seen guys do uh, that's kind of popular that will also work with this is Mopar sells a differential cooler kit for the Viper. So anybody that takes out one of these cars and decides, hey, I want to road race it not really a drag race issue, but a road race issue, uh, and they want to track the car, they should look at putting a cooler on this because this car was only rolling around, you know, 40 miles an hour on its way over here, and you can put your hand on it, it it's 100 degrees. Right. Yeah, where it's pouring out. Yep. So you can obviously see. It. Just wait for it to come out. Yeah, it needs to die down, but once it gets close, it's close enough. <laughs> see, right now we're like an eighth of an inch too high. That's fun. That was plenty. It's not as bad as the old rear ends because they had actual pumping tubes and so on and so forth. So uh, you wanted it high when you went and did it because it would lose fluid as it went. And that is basically that. <laughs> awesome. Nothing to it. <clears throat> it's nice when you actually have a lift. <laughs> yeah. Where you can get the car level. Well, then you get to see what's going on with your car, too. <laughs>
believe how loud it is. Like, I just never get to hear it, you know? I never get to hear the car, but it's like, damn, that thing's loud. It's so. These cars have so much insulation. Yeah. That it muffles out the kicker system that mine has. Oh, did you? You never, you never got to see my new, uh, my new tires. Don't look at that one. That one's curb rashed. Look at this one. Have you seen how it sticks out just a tad? It's just, it's not bad though. It's not bad. 305 is supposed to be a wide body. Yeah, I know. <laughs> All right, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate your help. Scott. All right, guys, that's going to end the video for today. Thank you so much to Robbie for letting us come over and just use his lift. That is going to be the rear diff fluid change. Uh, it's actually really simple, but uh, when you don't have a lift, it's like, uh, you know, kind of hard to do because you want to have the car level. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. We'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.